What's going on guys? So uh, if I sound a little different, it's because I actually got COVID. I'm not firing on all cylinders uh, in this video. A country I've been trying to get going for a while now is the Philippines. Because the Philippines are in a really unique position at the start of the game. You have a small population, you have a low literacy rate. Do start civilized though, which is actually huge. You don't have a big navy. You're, you're in a very poor position as the Philippines, but the Philippines have a lot of potential. You also get uh, HM's government. So I can just quickly switch to a jingoist government, which is obviously huge. So just quick off the bat here, we're gonna grab Brunei. Quick little Brunei war. Quick and easy temperance league, you got me there. Also, one thing that I think really sucks as the Philippines is that you don't get coal in Cebu. Now in EU4, Cebu is a huge, huge coal producing province. But no, as the Philippines, your RGOs are actually garbage. They're terrible. They're so bad. Also, you're kind of away from a lot of the major powers, so you're not gonna get sphered so easily, which is a good and bad thing. Well, the opening for the Philippines is pretty easy. Take Brunei, take uh, Formosa. There's a guy in my comments who gave me this, this devious little idea about uh, annexing most of China. But in order to do it, you need to take all the land off of China. Now you can do that pretty easily as Japan, like I showed you guys. Bam, Brunei, down. Let's go to Africa. And how do we always go to Africa when we grab Dar es Salaam? Taiwan. And just taking this one province is going to substantially increase our uh, population. Hey, we reach a secondary power. Pretty sweet. Ah, uh, finally, China lets us have Formosa. Thank you very much. Oh my God, what is happening to British India? Anarcho-liberals? So if you're wondering, why like in my last campaign we had a huge problem with communists in africa or why the british have a huge problem right now with anarcho-liberals in india depending on what things your pops are most interested in tells you like what sort of rebel faction they'll join most of the time the your most discontent pops are obviously going to be foreigners right they're going to be people who are not natives to your country so like if, if you look right here right now all the pops in our country who are discontent enough to join a rebel faction. As you can see, they're all, you know, minorities. And then foreign, Asian, minor, Malay, Spanish, you know. And the reason why they decide to join anarcho-liberals is because there are certain things that these pops value a lot. And one of the things that they value a whole heck of a lot is, is this, proportional representation. So like, as you can see, these Spanish pops, huge proportional representation, 18%, more than any other issue, that's what they care about. Look, it looks like it's less for some of these other ones. It's a confluence of all of the things that they happen to be most interested in that decides what rebel factions they join. And usually their biggest one is proportional representation. And what that means is that they're gonna gravitate to all the political parties which give them full citizenship. So right now, at this stage in the game, it's anarcho-liberals are one of the few parties that actually give full citizenship to all uh, pops within your country. So that's why there are anarcho-liberals in India, because all these Indian pops are saying, hey, we want representation in government. So they're all rising up to try and put in the anarcho-liberal party in charge. The same thing happens when you colonize Africa, because all these pops are obviously not your culture and they all want representation. So then they all side with the communists, because the communists also give you full citizenship. Oh, two infamy for all of Sindh? Jeez, that's a little ridiculous. Fighting battles is a good way to farm prestige. So we actually don't really mind that Punjab is involved in this because we can just show up and stack wipe all their troops and that'll be very helpful for us. If you ever need jingoism, have an election and then you should be able to get one of those little events 
and that can increase your jingoism such to the point where you can annex these guys. <laughs> we got the Philippines over here. So unfortunately, we can't take over Bukhara because they're in the Russian sphere. I think Persia is as well. See, if we actually add any war goals on Panjab at this point, then the British will join in. But if we just sit here, <laughs> if we just sit here and occupy them, well, there's nothing the British can do. Hey, we're a great power. Philippines, eighth great power of the world, as we all know. So now, yeah, we just, now we're making tons of money because we finally got liberated. We're not in the... American sphere of influence anymore, the dreaded Americans. Oh my god, what is this? I've never seen this happen. Yamani, Egypt? It's incredible. So hoping it's Somaliland. At least Somaliland kind of cuts off part of Africa for us. Yeah, the, the thing is, is that the Pacific is a little bit more expensive. It's 100 colonial power, while Africa is only 80. And it's way more densely populated. But, you know, obviously the Pacific can be turned into full states later. So you want to hold off on actually making these from uh, protectorates into colonies. They cause more colonial power. Let's try and get Uganda and then Equatoria. Cut all of this here off from other colonizers. All right, so I was having this weird fucking issue where we were getting no timber. So what I literally did is I d deleted all of our factories that use timber. That seemed to work. But the reason why we lag so far behind in this colonizing is that we couldn't build these naval bases because we couldn't get the timber for them. Oh my god. Look at Russia. Holy crap. They have no units in Shandong. Oh my god. Oh, this is perfect, actually. Bam. Sick. Okay. I think that still counts as an encirclement. Yeah, we stack wiped them. Oh my god, this is an intense war. This is one of the most intense wars I've fought in this game. <laughs> China is officially on its own. I think they fell to rebels. I think we can annex Qinghai and Yunnan and Mongolia, like each with one war, I think. It would be pretty sick if we did. Also, oh my god, look, we got 98% literacy. That's a lot of literacy. Oh my god. Look at the sheer number of Chinese soldiers. Okay. So we've effectively encircled these guys. Now watch this. Oh my god. Look at this battle. This might be the biggest stack wipe I think I've ever seen in this game. <laughs> oh my god, look at this. So we lost 70,000, they lost half a million. Ooh, yep. Okay, I think that is what the doctor ordered. <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> I mean that's that's what we all came here for isn't it that's what the people came to see oh we got the Nobel Peace Prize yeah we're, we've been really working hard for international peace that's for damn sure <laughs> we got the Nobel Prize in literature we're a very prestigious nation just, are we gonna get a free war goal on Guangxi? Like that, that is amazing. Oh my God. We don't need any help here. Oh, finally, we're a great power. Now that we're about to annex the entirety of Southern China. <laughs> Did we really, we got every single province in Africa that didn't have rubber. And every single province in Southeast Asia that didn't have rubber. I mean, we could annex Vietnam. <laughs> that would give us rubber. Man, everybody wants to be our friend now that we're a great power. 
Almost free. Almost free, Warbow. I'll take it. Bam! And look, we've got all these colonies over here. And over here! Oh my god. 3.8% population is Filipino. Man, we're doing pretty good. <laughs> Can sphere Japan. Oh my god. Part of me really wants to come down here and just take Hong Kong. Even though that would be a little goofy, it would be a little silly. But I mean, we could do it. Oh no, not the Boxer Rebellion. What the, why does Belgium even exist? How did, how did this happen? How did any of, how did any of this happen? I'm so confused. Oh my God, we've got the South German Confederation and the North German Confederation. It's gonna be a weird, it's a weird timeline for sure. Bam encircle the entire Chinese army. Yep. Stack wiped the whole Chinese army. Easy. Easy. I think I'm just, I'm getting too greedy when I play this game. I'm getting too greedy about the infamy. When I have it, I don't want to spend it. <laughs> I definitely want Shaanxi just because of all that coal. Ooh, Shaanxi nationalists. Let's actually, ooh. Ooh, okay. We're gonna let these Shangzi nationalists win. <laughs> oh no. Well, we've cut off China from their other provinces. So we've ensured that this is just gonna be a rebellion central for the rest of the game. This is one of the worst Africas. I mean, it's just the the name goes, ooh, that's just, maybe we should conquer Ethiopia just to fix the name placement. I mean, honestly, Portugal, you did so well. You did so well. And now look. Look at you. You idiot. Yeah. Okay. So we got Hainan. So North Borneo, the first craftsmen who have settled here, are Chinese people. And that means that all the pops will promote to being Chinese. Oh my god, Austria's number one GP? This is this is a weird this is a weird Europe, man. I mean this is not as bad as it was in the last game, but still pretty strange. Oh yeah, let's just let's just fuck up. Let's fuck up the Russians, huh? Let's just kill them. Oh my god. The game crashed again. So I just realized that I did not record so I just lost like an hour and 30 minutes of footage. But I'll show you guys how things kind of ended up. We did pretty good. Uh, we kicked out the Russians out of uh, out of Northern China here. We had to release some nations for the sake of infamy. But this is kind of where we ended up. We ended up kicking the Russians around so badly that they're actually in the middle of a communist revolution. Where have I seen this one before? Europe is kind of weird this game. The Balkans are a mess as they always are, but you have a North Germany and an Austria with a South German Confederation. They never formed Austria-Hungary. Spain is just in eternal communist liberal revolts uh, every five minutes. The UK, because the UK joined the Russian side in the great war that we fought against them, the UK is now falling to communist rebels and Irish nationalists, which, you know, many such cases. Uh, Philippine Africa looks great. Portugal got their pink map. Uh, Bulgaria is like majority Turkish, <laughs> which is kind of absurd, but Albania is not, I suspect, from the craftsman glitch. We almost feared every nation over here in East Asia, but fucking Qinghai is a holding out under the sphere of the US. But I swear I, OB I clicked for OBS to record, but then OBS just didn't record. The overwhelming majority of our population is Chinese. Uh, we've got the craftsman glitch. So the Russians conquered Southern Anhui because they did that. They imported uh, Belarus Belarusians to be craftsmen and now they're all promoting to, uh, to Belarusians. So that's kind of funny. Yeah, Northern Anhui is 50% Russian craftsmen. I really enjoyed this game. Not too much crazy stuff happened around the map, but I did think this was pretty interesting. Our literacy rate was dog water by the end of the game simply because we conquered so much land in China. <laughs> anyway, if you guys like this video, leave a like, comment down below, 
what countries or games you'd like me to play next. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, everybody. Thank you.